Great, we've got a little Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. In yeah, it's shaking up a little bit. Sweet. Frank, I don't think we had a chance to speak with you since the decision to switch quarterbacks. I mean, sure. what, what went into that decision, and, and how do you think Christian has played since taking over as a starter? Well, let me say this first, man. We got an unbelievable group of players in this football program. You know, Coach Narduzzi's done an unbelievable job building his uh, culture. Our guys, uh, not only Christian and Phil in this situation to this uh, the answer to the question, but our guys give us everything they have. And when you got to make a tough decision like that, the, the, what you love as a coach is that this team loves each other and they compete with each other and they root for, for each other. At the end of the day, uh, we just felt like it was time to make a change and it was really no reflection on f what Phil's performance was. And once we made the change, I was so proud of how Phil Jerkovic handled the situation. And we were actually talking about it yesterday in the quarterback room. And uh, it was after the Louisville game. I think Phil was the very first player to respond to Christian saying, wow, did you play a great game? And he made some big time throws. Um, you know, love all these guys. We got a special group of guys. Um, they're doing an unbelievable job fighting through adversity right now. What do I mean by that? Man, they're giving us everything they have. The work ethic is unbelievable. The positive attitudes. Um, you know, so when it, came, when it came time to make a tough decision, uh, and those decisions need to be made, because you gotta do what's best for the future and good of the program, really pleased with how the, not only the quarterback room, but the, how the whole team responded. Frank, as a quarterback coach and as a coordinator and play caller, what can you do to help Christian develop? Because he's young and he's inexperienced. Wow. I mean, we can talk all day on quarterback development. I mean, really. Um, you know, it starts with fundamentals and techniques. You know, and it takes time. It takes time. And then as a, as a play caller, as a coordinator, as a quarterback coach, you're always trying to put everyone in a position to be successful. You know, we talk about it all the time in the quarterback room because I've had such unbelievable experiences around great, great quarterbacks and great coordinators. When you really look at the quarterbacks that have had great success in the National Football League, and I go back, I think of Joe Montana and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, and there's so many of them. They had the luxury of playing in the same system with the same coaches. And they learned from every day, from every experience. Um, so the important thing is we love coming in here on Sunday, win or lose, and really watching the game tape because it's such unbelievable teaching moments for the, not only the quarterbacks, but all the players. But Christian's on his fourth start. And what he learned Saturday in South Bend He'll be able to take with him the rest of his career, you know, starting with this week. Um, Al Golden, the defense coordinator at ND, did some really good things on defense coverage-wise that we will only learn from. And the more that uh, the more a quarterback plays, Christian in this case, the more he plays, the more reps he gets at understanding this is what it looks like for certain coverages or certain looks the quicker he will be able to respond and make good, decisive decisions. The transfer portal takes that away, though. I mean, Brady, Rodgers, they were with the team forever, but yeah. now quarterbacks you know, move around pretty, pretty you know, You know, unfortunately, and, and, I, and I know a lot of people don't understand this, continuity for a quarterback is so imperative. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know whether, whether it's in college football, whether it's in pro football, being able to playing the same system, have the same language, the same terminology, the same people around you, understanding that this is what it's gonna look like when a play is called, and now I understand the defense, and I understand what it's gonna look like when we're I'm gonna go with the ball. You know, hey, I had an experience in San Francisco with Alex Smith, first pick, right? Great quarterback, great guy, and I think by the time I got to San Francisco with him, he might have been on his fourth or fifth coordinator. That's really, really difficult and hard, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, because it's all about repetitions. It's all about really understanding uh, play design. What what is it going to look like? That way, they can make good, decisive decisions and play fast and accurate. Frank, why hasn't the offense clicked 
the way you had hoped this year? Yeah, you know, it all starts with myself. It all starts with coaching. Um, football is the ultimate team game, and, and it really is. For one play to be successful, it takes the other 10 guys to also do their job. You know, uh, whether it's the quarterback in the passing game, whether it's the running back in the running game, it takes everybody. Um, so, I mean, football's a game of execution. I mean, really, football is a very simple game. It comes down to execution. You try to improve the individual, to improve the group, to improve the unit, and it just takes everyone doing their job to the best of their ability. Our job as coaches is, is to put the play design, hopefully, to our advantage. Um, and it's hard. There's, there, we talk about it all the time on offense. Life is difficult. Football is difficult. The life lessons that we are learning right now today, how to fight through adversity, uh, you know, being positive and, not, and having belief in yourself and belief in your teammates, these are invaluable life lessons. But to answer your question, it comes down to execution. Football really comes down to this, guys. Blocking, tackling, throwing, catching, covering. And uh, we just got to continue to coach the fundamentals better and, and put our guys in a position to be successful. You've coached a lot of quarterbacks in, in your time. Yeah. Where is Christian at as far as his decision making? Like, what impresses you about his ability to make certain decisions in, at this early in his career? Yeah, what impresses me, and I'm, I'm sure we all see it, when you just watch Christian throw a football, I mean, he can spin it, right? Mm -hmm. um, he's, got a, he's got a really nice delivery. He's got a quick delivery. It's compact. Um, the ball comes off his hand really well. It spins well. He can make all the throws. I think he sees the field well. He'll only see it better every day that he plays, you know, if coverages are changing on him. He loves the game of football. He's a tremendous leader. Um, he puts a lot of time and effort into it in terms of his preparation. And, you know, it's when he chose to come here back in January, we talked about it's the journey. What did we mean by that? He knew he had three years of eligibility, and it's not where he was in January, but it's where he wants to go within his three years. In your, in your, in your working with him, to, it seems like you guys are trying to engineer up more of those one-on-one -on -one deep balls to give him a chance to show off that, 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 that strong arm. Yeah. Where do you see that being as far as like valuing assets versus decision making, the ability to throw it deep? What does that do for you as a coordinator to allow you to plan more parts of this offense? Yeah, well, you know what? Um, as a coordinator, play designer, you look at your quarterback and you've got to try to put him in a position to be successful based on his strengths, right? The one thing that he can do is make really good, quick decisions. He gets the ball out of his hand fast. So, for instance, when you look at uh, some of the things we've done the last few weeks, we're getting the ball out of our hand quicker, you know, because he can beat defenses with his release. He can beat defenses with his ball location, his accuracy. You know, so the quarterback hits and sacks have gone down because of the style of calling the game in terms of, you know, whether it's quick game or run solutions of trying to get the ball out quicker. Uh, you alluded to the one-on-ones, which is uh, really observant because the better passer you have, and you know, you feel like you can win one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a wide receiver out there one-on-one -on -one a corner, and you feel like, hey, that quarterback is going to get the ball out of his hand quick to beat the rush, but also to beat the coverage and throw an accurate ball. I think <clears throat> one of the things that stood out in the Notre Dame game was the zero targets for Gavin. Um, quarterback has to throw the passes, of course. But uh, you mentioned about being a play designer. You know, do you take it upon yourself to try and create more of those opportunities? in the design of the play yeah. and the play calling? Great question. You know, because truly when the game's over, um, you want every young man to have opportunities. And you want every young man to have a chance to help the football team win. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, Gavin didn't get touches. I need to do a better job getting Gavin touches. Hopefully this week he gets some touches. Um, ultimately, the defense will determine where the ball goes based on their coverages. Um, the ball doesn't always go to the primary receiver because they might take it away and the ball goes to the secondary. But uh, Gavin's a big part of this offense. He's had a really good season, and uh, hopefully he gets more touches down the road here. 
on the note of tight ends, Pat mentioned last week that Phil started to work a little bit at tight end in practice, and obviously it's his first time doing this, but <laughs> as, as a guy who's known him for a while, yeah. what have you seen from him in those, in those drills and everything? Well, the most impressive thing I've seen about Phil is he loves football, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, he loves coming in here every day and just practicing. And uh, he said something to me the other day. He goes, you know, this has really made me realize how, how much I love football. Um, you know, he has measurables. So, you know, like, like if you're recruiting or drafting uh, a tight end, you look for certain measurables, right? You're talking about a young man, six foot five, 250 some pounds. He's got really good nat natural soft hands. Um, you know, he's athletic, you know, we know his background. So, you know, I'm sure, you know, Phil just wants to help this football team win. That's what you gotta love about the culture here the coach has, is that we got a team that, that man, they believe in each other. They want to help each other. And I think, you know, Phil has just bought into the culture and he just wants to help this team any way he can. A lot of people, when they talk Couple about, more. when more they talk about guys. offensive coordinators, they talk about just purely play calling and yeah. this is that, this is what, but the challenges that face in the teaching aspect, you can call them the greatest plays, but if you don't properly teach the plays, their, their players aren't going to execute it. What are the biggest challenges that you've seen as far as being a coordinator and teaching the, how the play, play concepts fit into the offense. Yeah, well, the first thing that came to my mind there, Chris, was as I've gotten older, you know, I've been around great coaches, great players. And when I was younger, I was so consumed with the scheme, the fundamentals, the techniques, you know, the details of really making it go like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. as, I got, as I've gotten older, and I mean, obviously through experience, I understand those aspects, you know, better. I think more about the leadership. I think more every day I drive in here, I think about how can I stand in front of this team or this offense and make a difference as a positive leader because it's our job to inspire, it's our job to teach, it's our job to uh, really put these young men in a position to be successful on and off the field. Um, so as a coordinator, I love the leadership aspect of it. You know, trying to inspire these young men and really the teaching moments that we have right now that uh, hey, we're going through adverse times right now, but we're going to learn how to fight through adverse times by one, believing in yourself, believing in your teammates, um, and staying positive and working, working hard. Now, the aspects of what you're talking about, the execution of plays, it's hard. Whether it's you're in the National Football League, college football, high school, getting the execution, you know, it's not easy, but every day we go out there and we strive to do it better. And uh, I just love the way our guys work. And our guys are great. I mean, we love our players, man. They love the game of football. Um, they love to be coached. They practice hard. And hopefully, every game day, we just get better execution. Frank, you mentioned the hard work. How have they approached this challenge of facing the number four team in the country on Saturday? Well, you know, we're at home, right? Lock the gates. You know, it all goes back to the great culture and history and tradition we have here at Pitt. Um, I think we have a team that's really excited to, you know, go out there and play at home in front of, in front of the great Pitt fans. And, uh, you know, they're excited. It's a great opportunity. Frank, thank you very much.